No. Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace! Oh. What? You're still here? You want more? Alright, well sit down and buckle up cause class is in session. And today we're going to be talking about this strange notion that Sukuna has become a very boring villain now. A notion which I obviously vehemently disagree with, but before I go in depth with my position on this whole thing, I think it's important to establish who Sukuna is, and how we got to where we are today. By the way, that leaving a like thing, I know that intro kind of seemed like a little bit of a joke, but make sure you do leave a like. It really helps out these Jujutsu Kaisen videos and the channel. But to get back to the topic at hand, uh, now in hindsight, our very first introduction to Sukuna wasn't actually all that spectacular. I think the anime might make some think differently because of the excess flair, but in the manga, it's really not all that special in my opinion. He had basically zero control over Itadori's body to a point where Yuji could just decide when and where to give and take back control. Sure, he took down a cursed spirit in one shot, but that was then immediately followed up by his first true fight in the series which was just used as a vehicle to showcase the might of Gojo, essentially trampling all over any initial hype and making him look like kind of a pushover. But keeping hindsight in mind, this and the chats in the following two chapters, where some insight is actually provided about Ryoman Sukuna and how he earned the title of the King of Curses and why he was so weak, was for sure done by Gege to set up an eventual rematch between the two. Now, what's also learned from these chapters is a somewhat basic understanding of what Sukuna is all about. Because after going through the process of becoming the aforementioned King of Curses, he became something akin to a force of nature, unstoppable in his quest to exact his will across the world. Not to rule or anything like that, but just to go and do and kill and take whatever, whenever, wherever he wants. Because what is a better mark of a king than being someone subservient to no one other than yourself? Philosophy aside though, the next time we see Sukuna, he definitely makes up for his initial lackluster performance. Instead of getting manhandled, he is the one that starts handling the men. It sounds kinda weird, also inaccurate, cause he was fighting a cursed spirit again. But in this encounter, we start to see why Sukuna is regarded as a truly fearsome figure, and how much stronger and terrifying he could potentially be if he were to regain all his power. Because not only do we see him make a special grade look like a rag doll, but he also gives us the first ever official look at the peak of Jujutsu, Domain Expansion. And this fight, along with the one against Megami, should have let everyone know the type of character we're dealing with here. Because almost all of the traits of this character are on full display here. Some are displayed in more subtle ways than others, but it's still all mostly there. His kingly aspect is presented for sure, his chaotic slash sadistic side is shown in the way he absolutely bullies and belittles people who are far beneath him but there's also a certain serenity shown about him as well. He's able to ramp that energy up, but also keep it very, very calm. His fight with Megami specifically is a great example of this, because after letting loose for a bit, he then takes the time to ponder about Megami's potential, even asking him about the decisions he's made in his battles. And he does all this because that's who Sukuna is. He's multifaceted and the best parts of him come out to shine in battle. And I'm gonna make two comparisons here that might upset a few of you, but just hear me out, okay? He's a perfected Kashimo, and he's actually kinda like a perfected Gojo too. He is the best of the strongest because pride isn't something he's really beholden to. Pride literally defines Kashimo, and it ultimately led to his downfall. Similarly, Gojo, even though it wasn't to the same extent, also held a ton of pride, which kinda led to his downfall too. Meanwhile, Sukuna, I mean, just look at the way that he's handled himself so far. Go back and reread Gojo vs. Sukuna. 
reread Sukuna vs. Maharaga vs. Jogo. Sukuna vs. Jogo is actually another fight that perfectly displays almost all of his character traits. It's one of his best fights because of that fact. Also the meteor, but I challenge people to reread any of his fights. But don't misplace confidence with pride. And I'm not even trying to come off as like a fanboy here. I know the flattery is, is being laid on heavy right now, so it might be giving that impression, but I say all of this because this to me is why Sukuna is such a terrifying and entertaining villain. And I think a lot of people, just to transition into this new narrative that he's boring, Look at this character, who by the way still has a lot of unexplored lore, the Fallen, remember that? But they look at him as the guy that is quote unquote Gege's favorite. They see him as someone who just has an infinite amount of plot armor. But what they don't look at him and see is Sukuna being the force of nature that Gege has always written him to be. They don't see him as a character that is the final boss of the series who has over a thousand years of experience. They don't see him as a competent, calculated foe that lives up to the title of king. They don't see that this battle against Jujutsu Hai is a battle of attrition, and that in said battle, despite him being so powerful and holding back at times, he still almost died on at least three separate occasions, and the subsequent damage has done a number on him. But because he is who he is, he's able to consistently come out on top. Now what I also believe is contributing to this new narrative is the fact that Sukuna has been beating and seemingly killing off a lot of people's favorite characters. Higurama, Kashimo, Gojo, Maki, etc. But the thing is, one, Jujutsu Kaisen has never shied away from killing off characters before. So in the battle against the literal strongest, why would that stop? And two, we don't even know if half of these characters are even actually dead. I mean, Kashimo we know for sure, but Gojo, Higurama, Yuta, their bodies were recovered and taken back to Shoko. There's a plan in place, it's just a matter of patience. But you know what, for argument's sake, let's just say that they are all dead. If anything, for me at least, that adds nothing but more tension. And it actually builds up a substantial amount of intrigue into wondering how exactly they're gonna take him down. Any way you slice it, no pun intended, Sukuna is an exciting villain to watch, and everything he's been doing fits in line with what Gege has consistently written for this character, and the series in general. Take his fight with Maki, for example. The Black Flash was not pulled out of thin air. All of the requirements needed to obtain that power were met, so that's why it happened. And it's honestly for me such a breath of fresh air to see someone like Sukuna be such a threat, to live up to the titles and consistently deliver on all fronts as a villain.